Welcome. I know nobody's here, but this is the number one live stream for the Plan Pack Travel. Now, I have very little subscribers. What about five? Probably most of them won't show up. It's something that a beginning YouTuber has to go through. But let me introduce myself. My name is Mark Hanna. And I'm creating this channel, been creating it for months now, getting all the pieces set up, getting the plans done. But basically, this channel is going to be in the beginning, a discussion on the aspects of planning, preparing, and getting ready to leave a, in this case, you United States Western lifestyle where you own your home, you've got your cars, you have all your possessions, you've got all your furniture, You've got everything that a successful Western middle fa middle class family's got. And you decide that it's time to make a change. It's time to, well, you only get so many trips around the sun. So I'm going to sell my house, my cars, and I'm going to go have some fun. So I've got about 30 countries on my list that I'm going to slow travel and visit out of suitcases. And the hard part about this is if you truly want to do this and you're middle class and you don't want to just like close up your house and, and continue to maintain a home in the United States and, or the UK or Australia or wherever you're from, uh, you know, that's expensive, especially in Western countries, keeping the house and everything's expensive. So if you want to, if you want to slow travel the world, in my case, I'm slow traveling by myself. Uh, there's a lot of planning involved. There's a lot of parts. There's a lot of pieces. And this channel, I feel as though I've had to go through a lot of hoops and a lot of learning on just the procedure of doing this. It's not as easy. And I'm well documented. That's the one thing I am is well documented. But I figure if I can create these live streams and build a, a little bit of a following, YouTube will promote these. Uh, Facebook will promote these. I basically have set this plan pack travel up as having four parts. There's a YouTube channel. There's a blog website. There's a Twitter account for this channel. And there's a there's really a Facebook account for this channel too. And you put all these together to cross market the ideas. But the real the real thing is I want to answer the who and the what. I want to answer specific questions for people who have them. Now, right now, I don't have a big following, so people aren't asking the questions. So I'm going to be coming up with subject matter that matters. Uh, you know, just little things like what, what cell phone provider do you really want if you're going to be doing a lot of international traveling? What type of phone do you really want? Now, I have a tech background, a very, very long tech background. I was on the bleeding edge of a lot of stuff. And uh, in the description of this 
video on YouTube on the description, you'll find a, a link to a bio. But the real thing is I've been trying to get out of the United States for months, but it's so, it's, it's so encompassing. You're, you're trapped. You're, you're, you're tied into so many different things. My house is up for sale. But then there's, what do you do with your 45 guitars? You know, what are you going to do with all these things? Now, are you going to, you going to store them somewhere? Do you have some place that you can store them at a relative's place for free? Are you going to saddle yourself down with two, three, four hundred dollar storage bills and take all your stuff and put it in some we store you lock type establishment? These are just some of the things that you have to think about. The passports, the the international vaccinations, the international health insurance, the international driver's license. There's, there's just so many different, so many different aspects of it. Now, once I do get out of here, which I'm hoping by the end of this year, I am out of the United States and start traveling around to, places that treat you good, uh, then it, I will be doing a daily blog, a daily vlog of where I'm at, what's in the food like in the area. I'm not going to be eating at McDonald's and Wendy's. I'm going to be eating the street food and the small little restaurants in Bangkok or Chiang Mai or Bali or Fiji or maybe Cebu, Philippines. I may be in the Caribbean islands, may go, maybe in Montenegro or Turkey in the summer months. I may be in Belize, Georgia, Armenia, Hungary, the Czech Republic. There's a lot on my list. But basically, I'm going to try to stay where it's warm. And during that time, I'm hoping to turn this channel into one of the travel vlogs. And, and it's going to be with a little different flair from some of them. Now, I'm 66 years old. I'm overweight. I'm not in the best shape. I'm not going to be hiking up to the top of the mountains. But I'm hoping that there's a lot of people out there that I can inspire that you're not too old, you're not too out of shape to go have a little fun. And am I going to be, you know, climbing the cliffs and doing cliff diving? No, don't think so. But there's plenty of other things to do around the world things to see that older individuals can still enjoy and still have a good time. And there are so many travel vloggers out there who are digital nomads, who, which I will be a digital nomad. I am a senior cloud engineer. I actually do work for a company uh, and I can do that work from anywhere in the world. And they've already said that's cool by us. And I enjoy what I do. I enjoy the tech aspect of it. But most of the vloggers and uh, the travel vloggers, they're traveling from country to country. Most of them, not all of them. The ones that actually are living out of the suitcase and traveling, they're in their 30s and 20s and, you know, late 30s, maybe mid 30s. 
But for somebody like me who's 66 years old and overweight to say, I'm selling it all. I'm condensing myself down to a few suitcases, a guitar that will fit in an overhead bin, and carry on. Got to take a guitar. Got to. Uh, it can be done. At least I think it can, and I'm not backing down from it. And I'm hoping to inspire others out there. And one of the reasons is uh, the places I'm going are not going to be the tourist locations for the most part. They're not going to be the high-cost, high-dollar Western vacation locations where it can be very expensive. There's plenty of examples out there where a person can live pretty good on $1,200, $1,500 a month. I mean, that's reasonable. I'm not talking about living like a king, but for $2,000 a month in some of these places, you can live pretty well. Uh, I saw villas in Thailand for rent, four bedrooms, three baths, beautifully furnished. And I mean, excuse me, really beautifully furnished with every room leading out to an in-ground pool that's gorgeous and a separate little house for the maid to live in that has a bedroom and a bathroom. And that's basically all. It's more like a little hotel room in a separate room, house so that your help staff can, can stay there. But you're talking about a 2,800-square-foot ranch-style villa with in a gated community in Wahin for – Fifteen hundred a month. I mean, and who needs a four bedroom by themselves? But that you, you're talking luxury one bedroom condos, which are square foot wise a little on the small side. But you, you're talking three hundred and fifty dollars a month in some of these places. And I mean, beautiful marble showers, rain heads in the showers, and. And just gorgeous appointments, but not a lot of square feet. Uh, Want to spend five hundred? You get more square feet. Want to spend seven hundred? You get more square feet. But the cost of retirement in these places is far less than the United States. Far less, twenty five percent. I mean, in reality, it, it's just. So much less. Now, there are people out there who will be watching this. There's nobody watching it while I'm doing this live, by the way. But uh, there'll be people eventually watching this channel. I'm I'm faithful of it. Uh, and some of them will be saying, we've got a pension. we got some Social Security. Some people only have the Social Security. Some's got a little savings. And, you know, if, if they stay in the U.K. or the United States or Australia, the cost of living's three times as much as, as some of the countries like, you know, Montenegro or, you know, Bahamas. I mean, you can live in the Bahamas. It's not that bad. I mean, there, there's a lot of places in the Caribbean, Panama, Costa Rica. Uh, hey, Mexico's got a bad rap. At least it does in the United States because of, of the news. But there's 15 different cities in Mexico that are very interesting to go stay a month in. You don't have to stay forever, but you can go stay a month. But all this requires planning, and there's a lot of tools involved. There's a lot of easy ways to do things that I've been researching for a year and taking notes on. And the whole purpose of this channel 
is really how can I help answer specific questions and commit to providing value for people who are sort of in the same boat that I am. And I know they're out there. I have friends who, who, who say, well, I'm just scared to do it. It just seems so scary to me to, to do that, to, to just say, you know, leave with the plan of, Hey, you got a list of places you want to go and you've done research on them. And I sure have, you know, I've got enough places for four or five years, probably that if I stayed 30 days in a place and I'm just going to where they treat you good. And if they, if, you know, things aren't good, how long does it take to pack, pack a few suitcases? It don't take me that long. Pack a few suitcases, make some more plans, travel. That's the whole thing. But I have been working so hard at, at tying up all the loose ends to where you can travel free, to where you can empty your mind as well as your possessions. You know, I mean, no more cars to maintain, no more houses to maintain, yard, grass to cut. Snows to shovel. Oh, man, snow to shovel. Well, don't want to do that no more. Of course, I did. Let's be honest. I didn't shovel it. I paid to have it done. Because I remember when I was a kid in 1962, when it snowed, I grabbed that shovel. I went and made myself some money from all the neighbors who didn't want to shovel. So I figure I have to pay it forward. So when it snows, I pay somebody else to shovel. Since now it's my turn to pay for the people who want to do the work. That's called green grease. You put a little green grease, it'll fix everything. They come in hundreds, fifties, and twenties. Green grease, my favorite tool. But hopefully I'm going to be creating these live streams and if YouTube is good enough to populate this video to people who didn't attend the live stream, because I've got no live stream. And by the way, this can work because I have a person whom I follow who during the COVID pandemic, our frustration decided he would start a YouTube channel while on his travels. And he did live streams for about the first two months, and that's all he did. He didn't have any subscribers when he started. And in 10 months, he had 100,000 subscribers. 10 months. Uh, he did a lot of live streams. He did a lot of showing where he was and what he was doing and how the COVID lockdowns were affecting him and, and so forth. And, you know, he provided a lot of hope for a lot of people. And that's all I want to do. This isn't a channel about any kind of politics. You know, the COVID has affected everybody. Too many people have died and too many economies have been wrecked. Too many people have went hungry around the world. And uh, part of the reason I guess I haven't left the United States yet is seems like not a lot of the world's in better shape as far as their COVID-19 uh, situation as the United States is. A lot of places, they don't want to let people in. They don't want to open their restaurants. They don't want to, you know, open their bars. And, and uh, they've just 
lock themselves down, you know, uh, countries like Australia won't even let their own citizens come back in, vaccinated or not. Yeah, I mean, they've just closed borders around the world. So that's part of it. But that's not going to last forever. And uh, hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be doing more travel vlogs and not as many planning vlogs. But believe me, if you own a home, if you're in a, a major Western country, the Canoe countries, that's why I call Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United States, and the UK, Canoe. If you're in one of those countries and you're a middle-class citizen who's looking to make a change in their life and uh, you only get so many trips around the sun, might as well go have a little fun. But it takes a little bit of planning, too. And there's things people don't even think about. I mean, like, if you wanted to enter the country of Thailand now, you have to have international insurance. Uh, Medicare is not going to cut it. They won't let you in the door. Some people may not have even known that. Don't know where to go. I'm going to provide some reviews on on the research that I've done, make it a little easier on you, give you some recommendations, save you a little time. That's the purpose of this channel. And the, although I've put out a couple videos already, there is a video that's more of a biography video that there's on me and where I came from. You know, if you, if you, Want to get advice from somebody? You should know a little bit about them, I guess. There's a there's a lot of them out there, and uh, and I'm hoping that I get a big enough following that they can help me too. Because when you get when you get enough people participating in the conversation, a conversation means you have to listen, and I'm going to listen. And if I can learn, then hey, I'm I'm that I'm all for that. So I'm envious of those people who create content on YouTube and get do a live stream and 400 people come and they make comments and they leave comments and they they try to do good and and try to help. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of helpful people in this world if you just look for them. Sometimes that's hard to believe that people are actually helpful, but there's a big world out there that basically I haven't discovered. I've been all over the United States, but I'm not an international traveler. I have never been an international traveler. I've been in Canada one time. That's it. And it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't for much of anything. It was across the border run from Detroit into Windsor, Canada. Went up and played a couple hands of poker at the casino in Windsor and came back across the border same day. So you're going to be seeing things through the eyes of someone who's hasn't been there and hasn't done that, doesn't have the T-shirt that says it. That's a bad part about being me. You can't buy a lot of souvenir T-shirts because they don't come in your size. Man, you know. Oh, well, some things never change. But I'm going to have a lot of fun. And I'm going to hopefully inspire some other people who have been on the fence to, to help them make positive changes in their life, whether it's to slow travel the world out of suitcases or maybe it's just, man, that's a neat place Mark's at. Why don't we go take a trip there for a week or two and just take a vacation there? That's cool. That's all right, too. That's what you want to do. There's nothing wrong with that. 
you know, but you have to do research. A lot of these places are scary until you just see how nice they are and how kind and sweet the people are, uh, how friendly they are. Not every place in the world is that way. But I've been doing research for the last two years and mainly on YouTube from these travel vloggers. And there's places I watch a 20 minute video. I say, you know, I really wouldn't want to go there for one reason or, or the other. That's not for me. Uh, so that's not on my list. But, you know, there's places like Vanuatu. I never knew that place existed until I found out about it. But it, they call it the happiest place on earth. It's an island about 1,300 miles off the coast of Australia. Small population. Most of them speak English. Along with a hundred other dialects. In fact, there's more dialects per person in Vanuatu than any other place in the world. Yet, all of them seem to want to speak English too. The happiest place on earth. It's on my list. Hopefully, this is going to be an introduction for the channel, what it's supposed to be about. It's going to evolve. And I'm hoping that I can answer specific questions. And I'm hoping that I can inspire. And I'm hoping that I can bring about the real meaning of experience. And experience is a funny word in the English language. People go out and they say, wow, what an experience. And sometimes they say, oh my God, what an experience. You see, for me, I always think experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. That's experience. Experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. And hopefully, through proper planning and research, when you arrive someplace, you have a great time and not a bad experience. And that's what I'm hoping this channel will do. It, it's going to give me something to do while I travel the world too. You know, it, it's like, hey, I got to make another video today. Let's go see this neat place. Let's go eat at this restaurant I heard about. Let's document, show what kind of food they have in this country. The native cuisine cooked by the small little mom and pops down some alley somewhere. Uh, not necessarily the McDonald's. Well, never the McDonald's. But that's what I'm hoping to do. Sammy, quit making noise, will you? Can't you see, can't you see Sammy, we're trying to do, we're trying to do a live stream here. What would what, what you want to tell him? Sammy's a little upset that I'm going away. I think she's upset anyway. Sammy, what do you think? All right, well, I didn't plan this. I didn't lock her up anywhere. But she does that every once in a while. So far, I hope I've laid out what I want to do. I plan to do a live stream every day, at least for the next 30 days. That's the plan. And uh, the plan's subject to change, <laughs> subject to adaption. But uh, nobody's shown up for this live stream, which doesn't surprise me since it's 8 o'clock on Saturday night. And... <laughs> All five of my subscribers are probably in bed. Uh, but thank you very much for watching this on a delayed basis. 
if this is something that is of interest to you, look down in this description for the various uh, social media connections to this channel. Please press the like button and share. So put a comment. Let me know where you're from. Let me know if you're if you're really uh, have you ever thought about slow traveling the world out of a suitcase or are you just looking for for more advice on where to go on vacation, uh, the great places that you can go and visit, places that I've already researched. Uh, let me know your questions, what you'd like me to do a video on, things you were thinking about, uh, anything you can do to help me. I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything, but it would certainly help me a lot. I'd like to grow a community of, of friends. And, uh, and that's one of the big benefits. You can, you, you can use YouTube for good. And you can grow a community of kind-hearted people who just want to live good and have fun, enjoy themselves. So thank you very much for watching this first video. Tickle the like button, please. Just tickle a little bit, just a little bit. And uh, you have a great one. See you next time.